morning. Welcome to a regular county commission meeting this Tuesday, September the 14th. I think we have Dr. Bostic in the house to come forward, ma'am, and give us a few words. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this beautiful day that you have given us. We have awakened on this side of earth, and we're grateful unto you. And God, we're here today to bless and anoint this powerful board this morning of our county commissioners. Each one, I pray a special prayer for them and their families. God, I pray, hallelujah, as a board, that you direct them, that you lead them, that you give them the understanding that they need to move forward in the rest of this 2021 year. God, we're grateful for the service that they have provided for this county, and we pray that you continue to move them forward, God. And as we as a county, we're praying for those that have contracted COVID, we're praying for our students, yes. our teachers, superintendents, all those that have been affected, we pray for your comfort, yes. for those that are grieving right now, for the loss of their loved ones. Yes. We pray for your healing power, that every school be touched by you and protected. And we thank you for what you have done this day. In this meeting, as it moves forward, we're giving you the glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair, before we uh, move forward, I had a motion, if you'd entertain one, to permit Commissioner Tobiah to participate by phone. Yes, sir. He, I have a motion to have a second. A second. All in favor, say aye. 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 I think we're all there. Commissioner Tobias, are you online, sir? Yes, ma'am. No. <laughs> he was online. Perhaps I'm, a minute or I'm two. I'm here. Okay, we'll I go can, ahead and uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Lober. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Okay, um, Commissioner um, Smith, sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a proclamation to read. Is Kelly, Greg, and Veronica here? Come up to the podium. I take it you must be Greg. I'm Greg, yeah. Lone representative. Keen sense of the obvious. Yeah. Okay, let me read this. And when I finish, then the floor will be yours and you can tell us whatever you want about your, what, what you guys are accomplishing and what you do. Sure. Whereas hunger and poverty are issues of great concern in Brevard County and throughout the United States, and whereas Brevard County is committed to taking steps to raise awareness about the need to combat hunger in every part of our state and to help provide additional resources that Central Florida res residents need, and whereas more than 78,000 residents in Brevard County, we rely on food provided by the members of the Second Harvest Food Bank of Central Florida annually. And whereas more than 300,000 meals are provided every day to the six county service area in Central Florida by the members of the Second Harvest Food Bank of Central Florida, and distributed 96 million meals to the six county service area of Central Florida last year. Whereas food banks across the country, including the members of the Second Harvest Food Bank of Central Florida, will host numerous events throughout the month of September to bring awareness and help end hunger in their local community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, do hereby proclaim September 2021 as Hunger Action Month in Brevard County. Done, ordered, and adopted in regular session this 14th day of September 2021. Madam Chair, I move to a Approve this proclamation. I have a motion. Second. Second by Commissioner Loper. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There's Commissioner Tobias. Yes. Opposed? Welcome. 
passes 5-0. Floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you for this proclamation and bringing um, awareness <clears throat> to the issue of hunger. Uh, you mentioned Central Florida. Our hunger data here for Brevard County has uh, hunger insecurity at around 16%, about one out of six individuals unsure where their next meal is going to come from should hardships fall on them. And then you throw a pandemic on top of that. Um, for 2020, our food distribution doubled for the year to about 15 million meals. And for this year, uh, for 2021, we're still doing about 30% more food distribution pre-pandemic. So uh, if and when this pandemic ever ends, we still have the issue of, of cost of living outpacing wages. So we have some, some tasks ahead of us. So uh, when finances are tight, one of the first things um, families forego is food and particularly nutritional food. So we will continue to bring in as much as we can and continue to work on our network of great partners and pantries to continue to meet the need throughout Brevard County. So thank you very much for this uh, proclamation. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And you could, could you do me a favor and call my office? I would love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Of course. So, God thank bless you. you and thank yeah. you for being here. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Greg. We have Jeanette Gindling and Wayne. I knew I saw Wayne with you. Good morning. Good morning. I'll have you guys speak after we're done reading the resolution. Whereas the Space Coast Health Foundation requests the Brevard County Board of County Commissioners support through a resolution, Get Vaccinated Brevard, a new local campaign to boost the vaccination rates for COVID-19. And whereas the foundation understands and respects that getting vaccinated for COVID-19 is a personal decision involving an individual's family and physician. We also believe medical and hospital data show that COVID-19 vaccinations mitigate the worst symptoms of the virus and will ease the pressure on our hospitals and medical personnel in returning the Space Coast to a sense of normalcy. And whereas the foundation asked the commissioners to also support Get Vaccinated Brevard with their constituents and urge them to vaccinate if they are eligible. And whereas we strongly believe this is a community issue, not a political issue, and we as a community can solve this, Get Vaccinated Brevard aims to help with that endeavor. Now therefore be it resolved that the Brevard County Board of County Commissioners does hereby support Space Coast Health Foundation's campaign, Get Vaccinated Brevard, in the mission to boost the vaccination rates in Brevard County, done, ordered, and adopted in regular session this 14th day of September AD 2021. I want to make a motion to approve. Second. second. A motion by Commissioner Zonka, second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed passes 5-0. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for approving this resolution. The Space Coast Health Foundation's mission is to improve the health and wellness of Brevard County. And we truly feel that by encouraging vaccinations, by encouraging everyone to talk to their medical professional and make an informed decision, we realize the vaccine is not perfect for everyone, but we do believe that a large percentage of our community should be and can be vaccinated, and that will help curb the spread of this pandemic. So thank you for supporting these efforts. Thank you. Let us know what we can do to help. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Oh, please. Do you have any idea how close we are to reaching herd immunity between the people that have gotten the vaccine and the people that have been infected? Not exactly. I know from a data standpoint, but we are a ways away. The last mm -hmm. time I looked at the data, we were only 66% vaccinated. And it's the number we're looking for is 80%? At least, if not higher. I, I, I want to mention to you where I work at a, a, another job, my real life, and um, at that place in, in December, a lot of the uh, staff members got COVID, and it convinced me when this came around I was going to get it because they had a lot of pain, and I'm kind of old. And then recently, the younger staff, it went through them, and every one of them said, I wish I would have got vaccinated. So um, we have herd immunity now at our church, by the way, because everybody's either had a shot or had COVID. So, you know, that's probably a safe place to hang out there. But, <laughs> but thank you for this. I really do believe in it. And I, I've just seen so many people suffer with pain and so many people I love have, have, have left us. So thank exactly. you. Exactly, yes. 
And thank you, and a special thank you to Commissioner Zonka for attending yes. the kickoff meeting. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Zonka is kind of our hero here <laughs> with all the stuff she's been doing. Y'all want to come? Sure. Commissioners, do we have any consent agenda you would like pulled? Yes, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Okay, Commissioner Tobias, you, you got the floor first, sir. Sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, F24, please, and F25. Okay, Commissioner Lober. I'd like to pull 19, 21, and 33. And 33, and I'd like to pull item 34. Great. Can I have a motion to approve the consent so agenda? Minus, you guys have those items? Yes, 19, 21, 24, 25, 33, 34? I believe so. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Smith. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lober. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. We're going to move into item F19. Commissioner um, Tobias, is this one yours, sir? It's me, Madam oh, I'm Chair. I'm sorry, Commissioner Lober. That's okay. So as, as you see in the summary explanation and background, the second paragraph, uh, DRMP acquired Bus and Mayor Engineering on the 1st of September. Um, I think this will save us time in the long run. So in order to avoid any lapses in services and to ensure that we have a smooth transition to, uh, excuse me, from Bus and Mayor to DRMP, I'd like to move to approve this item, but beyond that as well, authorize the chair to execute assignments of any and all engineering and consulting services contracts with Bus and Mayor to DRMP, uh, pending review from purchasing risk in the county attorney's office. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Is it, wait, I, I, I will second it, but I just have to, uh, Mr. Denninghoff or Mr. Abate, or your thoughts on this? It makes sense to me just from hearing. Yeah, they it, would right? have been coming back and on as consent items. So idea. doing this just avoids it having to come back. Okay, my second. I mean, my motion stands. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Passes five zero. Item twenty one. Commissioner Lober. All right. Hopefully, this will be similarly quick. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to move to approve this, but I wanted to know if the commission would mind if I wrote a letter uh, thanking the gentleman, Mr. Blazer, for donating the land on behalf of the commission. I think it's a great idea. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go ahead and move to approve, uh, also authorizing me to write a letter on behalf of the commission thanking the gentleman. Yes, sir. Commissioner Tobia, this is yours. You good with that, sir? Yes, Madam Chair. Wonderful. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed passes 5 0. Item F24, Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, when I saw this initially, I thought I would be uh, voting no uh, without comment, as I've done in the past. Um, however, um, times have changed a little bit uh, since last. Uh, later in this agenda, there's an item also out of the tourism office requesting us to authorize new office space and a visitor center uh, for the department, which would uh, cost more than $1.25 million uh, uh, in five years in, in, in rent. So uh, I requested some data from staff and learned that the calculation for space needed uh, by the TDO is approximately 2,900 square feet. The space being requested for use by the BCA is 2,847 square feet. As you can see, the match is uh, pretty darn close. Uh, should the board choose to allocate this space to the TDO rather than a private entity uh, that is over a million dollars that could be used to advertise our local tourism industry or money that could be uh, held for a rainy day, particularly in the case of tourism revenue, begins dipping again due to uh, potentially an ongoing pandemic. Should the BCA uh, still wish to provide services to Brevard County regarding the arts, that could be uh, negotiated uh, separately. 
So uh, I, I, I would uh, make a motion not to approve the uh, lease extension as uh, there is a better fit for this space than the BCA. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair? Yes, May sir. I? I was, I was going to wait and address this uh, at the later time, but I'll go ahead and address it now. We are currently in um, 5,700 square feet of space. We have 15 full-time staff and two part-time. We did analyze the BCA space. Um, they have approximately five people in 3,000 square feet. Um, I, I don't believe that that space would meet our needs. Um, further, the analysis that we did uh, put our uh, this new potential office space in the tourism corridor. It's in Cocoa Beach. It puts the visitor center a block from A1A, which is uh, right in the tourism uh, heart of things. And I think it'll help us increase our, our volume significantly in terms of uh, assistance to, to visitors. Um, the uh, space that we're looking at, uh, it's 5,500 square feet, but a thousand of it has a large meeting space that could be used for um, about 25 to 30 um, committee uh, meetings that we have. And I think that's going to be significant savings to the county in terms of staff time and staff uh, gas mileage. Um, so I think there's some value there. So we're really talking about 4,500 square feet for 15 people, which I think is sufficient. Um, but I, I, I don't, I mean, I'll let Commissioner Lober certainly can, can attest uh, the, the space that the BCA is in probably is just not going to be tenable for us. Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Tobias, let me let Commissioner Lober speak and then you're next, sir, okay? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Commissioner Lober. Madam Chair, a couple of thoughts on this. First, I, I don't disagree with anything that Mr. Kranis had mentioned with respect to his arguments. I, I do want to highlight a couple of, of thoughts, though. And this interestingly enough actually goes to the item I, I think that um, you had put on later on in the agenda with respect to uh, commission office costs where there was a cost allocation uh, attributed to Kurt Smith Commissioner Smith and my use of county facilities the fact is this is not a hot commodity property by any means um, this is an old building there's asbestos in the walls which I'm fine with uh, I'm just not going to go rooting through the wall because uh, I probably would not be fine were I to do that the carpet, at least in my office, has been there at least since Commissioner O'Brien was in office. Um, frankly, it may be as old as I am. Uh, it's emerald green. Uh, it it uh, is great in St. Patty's Day, but apart from that, there's really nothing good with respect to it. The reason I'm, I'm there is because it's, it's essentially free for the, the county, and I don't have to pay a, a lease fee for it. Um, so from a taxpayer perspective, it makes sense. In terms of our ability to rent that out, I think we would have an inordinately difficult time convincing anyone to come there. Now, in, in terms of the, the, the TDO making use of the space, I'm familiar with the space. I'm in that building every day, sometimes multiple times a day with an occasional Saturday or Sunday when I'm not there. Uh, it, it's not going to work, uh, certainly not without putting big money into fixing it up. Uh, it would not be remotely comparable even to what we have. Um, as Mr. Kranis mentioned, it's, it's not, uh, or at least implied, it's not at all in, a, in the tourism corridor, uh, certainly not where you would have any degree of foot traffic whatsoever. Um, I think with respect to that building, it makes sense that we are extending nominal leases to certain organizations, again, because it's not primo real estate by any means. I don't think it's something we can monetize, and I think there would be a degradation in service rather than even a maintenance of status quo were we to uh, move the, the tourism office there. The facilities with respect to conference rooms are, are not, I, I think, uh, up to par with what we currently have. Uh, certainly in terms of the improvements that are being sought by moving closer to the beach side, which frankly is less convenient for me because it's further from my house and further from my office. Uh, that makes sense in terms of a direction to take the, the tourism office. I say that not just as someone who is in that, in that office building every day at the Merritt Island Service Annex, but also as the board's rep on the TDC. So I, I understand where Commissioner Tobias is coming from. I respect his appreciation for the taxpayers with respect to this, uh, but I, I don't agree with it because I, I think the circumstances simply won't fit. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Tobias. Thank you, Madam Chair. And w with your indulgence, may I ask a couple questions to Mr. Kranis? Of course, sir. Um, Mr. Kranis, are you aware of the calculated space per employee that a uh, consultant provided uh, for us? Uh, yes, sir. There's uh, a are you, 1980. Are you aware? There's, thank you. Are you aware that you're more than 50% over that uh, recommendation? 
even with the decreased uh, amount of space that you would uh, get uh, with this new lease? Madam Chair, may I speak freely, please? Thank you. Um, there's a 1989 study that was done um, that looks at the specific office size of individuals, but it doesn't take into consideration meeting space or hallway space. Um, if you were literally to line up offices in a row, you might be able to get to 3,000 square feet for us, but when you're talking 15 full-time people and two part-time people, if you think about a 3,000 square foot house, you couldn't put that many people in a house. You wouldn't want to do that. It was not a conducive work environment for us. Okay. Uh, Mr. Krennitz, how, how, uh, how many uh, new tourists will the county get, uh, do you believe, for the $1.25 million? Uh, should we uh, approve uh, your proposal in, in, in J5? I'm sorry, what? I didn't hear the first part of that question. So there's a, a lease uh, uh, later on, um, and it, it, over five years, it looks like it's a little over a million and a quarter. Uh, how many tourists, uh, extra tourists, do you think we would get uh, if we were to mm -hmm. approve that lease? So our, the, the lease that we're proposing is a five-year with a five-year renewal that it's about $100,000 a year. Um, it's about a, what we're paying now. So we're, you know, we're currently in 5,700 square feet and we're paying just under 100,000. Um, this is 102,000 for year one. And, um, and uh, I believe that the difference in rent we're going to make up in staff time and, and savings in uh, gas mileage because we'll actually be able to hold committee meetings at our location, which we currently are unable to do. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, I, I didn't hear a number. I, I, the question was for the amount in rent, uh, do, you, do you expect uh, to – receive any extra tourists coming to Brevard County? Because the question would be, if we were to provide this space, uh, and that money would be used for advertising for items like Facebook or billboards or print ads or, I don't know, dinosaur museums, do you believe that uh, that would potentially draw uh, more tourists? I think what you're asking is, is there a correlation between the rent we pay and the number of tourists that we generate? Uh, I. I think that having a good office environment for staff after we've had the literally the worst um, year in history last year in tourism, and now we've brought tourism back to have the best spring and the best summer um, that we've ever had in this county. I think staff is doing an excellent job. I think the leadership of the TDC has, uh, has shown that um, having a good work environment is important. Uh, Mr. Krennis, thank you so much. My responsibility, however, is uh, to the taxpayers. And while I'm certainly sensitive to staff, uh, I, I think our responsibility ultimately uh, should be to the the taxpayers uh, on this one. And and I greatly appreciate it. But as as Commissioner Lober has said, uh, he works in that environment, and it's not the greatest, but 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 he certainly survived. So. I do appreciate uh, you fighting strongly to get a very, very nice office for, for your employees. However, I just don't think it's in the best interest of taxpayers. Madam Chair, just, just briefly, and I, I, I promise I'll try to keep this from being too circular. It's not simply, I would restate the arguments, or at least incorporate by reference the arguments I made earlier, as well as the statements by Mr. Krannis, but not only would I suggest that we defer to very capable staff, uh, as Mr. Krannis just articulated, they have done an excellent job in terms of their role and their part in bringing tourism back following an absolutely atrocious, unprecedented year. But the fact is the folks on the TDC itself, not just me, but the folks that own hotels, the folks whose livelihood is very directly, not just related to, but dependent upon the tourism industry, would not have made the recommendation that they made to push forward the lease item that's coming forward, I think in J5 uh, is the number. Were that not something that's clearly beneficial to the tourism industry? One of the items that we have to look at with respect to expenditures that are coming out of the TDT is that there is a tourism-related purpose uh, that, that the actual approval or the item would further. The fact of the matter is you have people who, if they had the opportunity to spend it on something that would be likely to generate a greater ROI, 
They are by and large nice people. I will tell you, most people I have found act in their self-interest. Even assuming that the self-interest motive is the predominant motive, which you can assume or not assume, but let's say that's the case, I think that's a fair, a fair expectation, at least with some folks. They would not push to spend this kind of money on a lease if they could spend it in another way and get a better bang for the buck. The fact is these folks stand to benefit based on our driving of the tourism industry, and they have also made the determination, I believe unanimously, Mr. Kranis, correct me if I'm wrong, yes, that this is the way to go and that this money would have the greatest ROI out of all of the options available to us in terms of how to spend it. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have heard the, the statements, the arguments, the reasons, and uh, I greatly appreciate Commissioner Tobias thoughts and insight and his numbers. Um, and I, I'm real close to supporting him, but I, I am going to defer to um, the statements made by Commissioner Lober and Mr. Cranus. They, um, they've convinced me. So I'm going to, I would like to make a motion to approve this. Okay. I'll, sec I'll second it. I think the earlier motion may have died for lack of a second, Madam Chair. Right. Let me, let me check with Commissioner Tobias first. Commissioner Tobias, did you want to maintain a motion? You start it? No, I, I honestly believe there's not a second, Madam Chair. So Thank I, you. I would pull it back. Thank you, Thank you sir. You. Thank you. Have a motion by Commissioner Smith, a second by Commissioner Lober. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Pass this for one with Commissioner Tobias in opposition. Moving to item F25. Mr. Tobias, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the county's already spent uh, $3 million of uh, TDT uh, revenue at this park. Um, this is an additional million dollars that could be used at any of our other beach parks, as well as for, for a myriad of other purposes. Um, I looked at the item and was pretty distraught at seeing where this money would be going. Um, if you look on the uh, page two of three, it says, and then quote, add fauna, flora, along with a wild water feature. So um, I, I'm pretty concerned that we would be spending TTT dollars on, on a fountain or something of that nature after we uh, already spent uh, $3 million of TTT resources uh, on this part. So, uh, I certainly would make a motion to reject funding request for an additional million dollars uh, on, on this grant. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Smith, is that an old light, sir? Yes. Commissioner Lober. It is a new one, Madam Chair. So a, a couple things. I, I know that people, in, in terms of referring to this park, or at least its location, refer to it as the crown jewel. Uh, it's where we had the, the air show center-lined. Uh, it's something that is absolutely massive in terms of its scale. It's not a little park like Riverside Park and Rockledge by any means. Uh, a bigger park is going to have bigger expenses. The fact is this is one of those few items that comes up where not only is it clear that there's a benefit to the tourism industry, in this case largely based on where it's located, uh, sandwiched between large hotels, uh, but also there's a huge benefit to locals. Um, this is a, a park that, frankly, needs a lot of upkeep uh, in order to keep it even at the level of, of many of the other parks that we have. Um, the fact of the matter is I, I don't think that there is a luxurious request that's forthcoming. We're not talking about putting in anything made out of bronze or brass. We're not talking about putting marble or granite out there. We're talking about maintaining it and keeping it up uh, in a similar fashion to how we maintain other parks. Um, the fact is, it's something that is under the, the tourism office's uh, responsibility. Uh, whether that should be the case or not, I, I don't think is the point to discuss today. I'm happy to revisit that in the future if someone wants to put an agenda item on. Uh, but we have to maintain it to a certain standard. I can tell you the invasives there have become rather bad. Um, I'm happy whether it's Commissioner Tobias or anyone else. I'll, I'll happily go to Lori Wilson with Commissioner Tobias. I'll hold his hand if he wants me to do it, if it's a spooky <laughs> endeavor for him. That's scary. Um, it is scary. I, I'll somehow get over it with a lot of Purell. Uh, but the fact is, it, it really does need the, the kind of input that we're putting in. I, I really tried to be a, a team player 
uh, earlier in, uh, in office with respect to a very large allocation that we temporarily pulled back. So understand, it's not that my, my thought is simply spend, spend, spend if it's in my district. This is simply one of those things that uh, if you look at the status and the state of it right now, it's, it's not the way that it needs to be. The boardwalk money that we put in was absolutely necessary before. Uh, so to say that we're putting additional money over and above other money implies that the first money may have been ill-advised. I think we had a woman put her foot through one of the boardwalks before we actually went through and upgraded it. So when I say that we're really spending money for a, a profound or a, a genuine need, uh, I, I think that kind of illustrates the fact that it's, it's not luxury that we're looking for. We're looking to maintain some level of normalcy, some level of, of adequacy and, and standard. Thank you, Commissioner Lover. I just want to um, mention that our family goes to Lori Wilson Park, and we're up in District 1. So it's, it's a place where I'm sure many people go to visit. And back when we did go um, a few years ago, it really needed some love. So I, I'm going to um, agree to this, but I, I do want to send out a word to the, um, the tourist board that we make sure that we, we do distribution starting next year on, on other areas through the, through the district. So that's just my comment. Ma Madam Chair? Um, yes, sir. Commissioner Tobias. Yes. Um, may I please ask Mr. Kranis what I, I understand boardwalk is very important. Um, I'm just a little concerned again with how, how much extra, how many extra tourists we're expecting for flora and fauna and a water feature. Is this something that is, 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 will draw tourists because it's such a great water feature? Um, I'm not even quite sure what a water feature is. Uh, uh, you know, I Googled it, but I don't know how, in fact, that will draw any extra tourists. Doesn't sound like maintenance. It just, uh, sounds like something that, um, and, and I don't mean to disparage the $3 million that went in there previously. It sounds like it was used uh, very wisely. However, uh, I'm very concerned about this additional million dollars. So my question would be to Mr. Uh, Kranis, what exactly is the water feature that is envisioned and how many extra tourists can we expect because of it? Madam Chair. Sir. Yeah, so um, first of all, the million, most of the million will go to finishing the boardwalk that runs parallel to the beach that are the connectors between the crosswalks. Um, the water feature that's uh, mentioned in there, there is a small um, pond. I wouldn't really refer to it as a pond right now because it, it's w uh, way overgrown in the hammock area. But that is, uh, it's actually a heavy birding area and we're replacing the boardwalk within the hammock, which I think will make it uh, much more uh, appealable to the um, birders. Uh, who have come in the past but have lately not been able to access that hammock due to, due to the, uh, the boardwalk not being accessible. So now we're replacing that. Um, the water feature really is a pond that will allow for wading birds and that will attract birds, which will then, I believe, attract tourists in the, in the form of birders. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would just like to weigh in a little bit. I think Commissioner um, Lober has expressed himself very well, as he always does. Mr. Wordsmith to my left here. Thank you. <laughs> I've got you fooled. <laughs> um, but I would just like to say that it's, it's a difficult call when you're talking about advertising. One of the biggest mistakes that most small businesses make is they don't understand advertising, that there is no direct correlation and, and when there is, it's very hard to measure how much money you spend on advertising versus how many customers you get. Well, we're in the same predicament when it comes to dollars spent on something like Lori Wilson Park and how many actual tourists come that you could measure. I don't think you can. But I think you can measure the fact that if you present something that is as centralized and as... Um, as visible as Lori Wilson Park, it's easy to understand that when it looks good, it's going to benefit the entire community, not just Cocoa Beach, not just Lori Wilson Park, but Brevard County in general, because it is a magnet. And when that magnet is attractive, it attracts more. Just like when you throw out bird feed, uh, you're going to get more birds in your backyard than you would if you didn't. So I think that this is an extremely important expense, and I think that um, we'll get every penny and then some back in value. 
So I'm going to support this. Thank you. Commissioner Lober, I would like to let Commissioner Zonka speak first. Sure. If you don't mind, let's so can finish it up. Absolutely. Okay. Commissioner Zonka. I'll just say, you know, it, it's all part of the, the puzzle that as far as tourism dollars go and investing to ensure that we're continuing to have tourists that want to come here. I would just say, you know, in the future, and I don't know which member of this commission will be on the um, tourism board, but. I would love to, by the way. Okay. Okay. That's a volunteer right there. Just saying. I would just say, if we're talking about the Westin, we could look at also, I know they contribute through the tax, but we could possibly look at having some of these hotels give directly to help maintain these facilities, seeing yeah. as that's going to be a draw for them as well. Just something to consider in the future. But I'm going to support this. Madam Chair, just a couple other thoughts. And I, I know uh, Commissioner Tobiah has asked Mr. Kranis a couple times with respect to how many people a particular expenditure will draw. It's not simply calling for speculation. It's unknowable. Other than the Almighty, I don't think anyone could even potentially begin to answer that question. What I do know, though, is a lot of folks that come to Brevard come back, and that's what we want to see. We want to see them come here, spend their money, um, pay as much into the, the tourism tax, pay as much into the sales tax as they possibly can, and then come back and do it, whether it be in a year or two years or three years. Um, whether they want a snowbird, whether they want to do it over a, a school break or over summer break, we want them back. Um, there are a few things I think that will do an excellent job in keeping tourists away. Um, the lagoon looking terrible is, is something I think that will keep tourists away. Having needles in a park will keep tourists away. Putting your foot through a boardwalk or seeing someone else put their foot through a boardwalk would probably discourage someone from coming back in the future. Brazilian peppers all over the place where clearly they, they were not intended to be will keep people from coming back. So yes, I think it's, it's difficult to impossible to quantify exactly how many more visitors or tourists will have either come here for a first time or return based on these expenditures. But I think common sense would dictate that if the condition of the park is as it is now, it discourages people from coming back. And if we cleaned it up to an extent that was at least standard or acceptable, I think we'll have less of a disincentive for people to come back. So again, I, I don't want to get circular. I think I've made all the points that I care to make, but I, I certainly support the item. Okay. Commissioner Tobias, you have a motion out there, sir. Do you want to continue with the motion? Uh, no, Madam Chair. It's very clear there's not a second on this one, Madam Chair. I, I look forward to seeing the exciting water feature. Thank you, I'll still sir. hold your hand, Commissioner Tobias. Thank you, sir. Can I um, have a motion? Move to pass. Motion for Commissioner Lober. Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Passes 4-1. Moving into item F30, Commissioner Lober, this is yours, sir. Uh, F33. 33? Yes, ma'am, F33. Thank you. So I, I'm going to move to pass it. I just wanted to take less than a minute to thank a few folks that were integral in getting this item here. First, Janice Scott. Jim Stahl and Laura Lee Thompson, and on the staff side, both Mary Ellen Donner and Peter Kranis. I just want to take a moment to thank them. I think their involvement, especially those, those particular named individuals, has been such that uh, it's appropriate to take a moment just to recognize them. But I'll move to approve F33. Okay, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Most certainly, sir. I have just one. One quick question. Who is Mansfield? I can tell you in the short version or the long version. You want the Let's short make version? It short. Yeah, okay, <laughs> the short version is it's, uh, she's an individual that's been very involved, and her husband, uh, who's passed, was very involved uh, with respect to the birding community, and they had a lot to do with setting up the canopy. Thank you. Sure. Okay, moving into um, F34, and I, I just wanted to mention my concerns with this, and maybe you guys can talk to them or or what you want to do. We, we've never typically used the county webpage to, to host to commissioners um, doing a conversation. So my, my request with this, if, if we make the motion to approve this, that you guys would do a disclaimer one, and that this would not set a precedence of what we do in the future, that it would have to always come before the board. So um, that's, that's what I would like to um, putting the boundaries on this. So that's just my request. Commissioner Lober? Madam Chair, I'm, I'm fine with both of those things. Um, I, I didn't intend, and I apologize if, if it even came across that way to try to exclude anyone on the commission. If anyone else wants to be on there, God bless, you're more than welcome. I didn't think so. I, I just wanted to make sure that um, we were in compliance to the greatest degree possible with Sunshine. 
Uh, this is something where, frankly, I, I think there was an argument that could have been made that we could have done this anyway on Facebook Live with two commissioners, maybe not using SCG TV if staff wasn't comfortable with it, based on the fact that the intention is to discuss what's already taken place, not what's going to come up in the future. So the idea, and I, I think Commissioner Smith may have been the one to, to really focus on the point when we had the item come up with waste management earlier, well, how are folks going to find out about this? This is a way that folks are going to find out about this. But I'm, I'm fine incorporating the, the couple of items, the disclaimer, and, and also understanding that this is not going to set a precedent and the items of this nature are going to have to come back to the commission. I'm fine making a motion to approve with those two things in mind. Okay, because again, my only concern was that we're using the government page and I and I, I, I we've gotten to know each other up here but we don't know who might come along later <laughs> and so um, I, I think it could be very risky into the future so I just wanted to mention that yes ma'am yeah okay I have a motion by Commissioner Lober with a couple extra criteria do I have a second 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 by Commissioner Zonka all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Passes this five zero all right, we are moving into um, public comment. I want to make a, a note here. If you speak in one public comment session of the meeting, you are Ill not eligible to speak in the last half. We divide it up in two in case we run over time. So please be aware of that. If you're speaking on an item, make sure you have the item number on the card, your name, and what you think the item is that you're planning on speaking on. It would help us out greatly. So move into public comment. Mr. Charles Tovey, haven't seen you in a while, sir. Believe it or not, we've all been asking about you, seeing how you've been. Welcome, sir. Nice to see you, sir. Thank all of you, and God bless everybody, good and bad. Charles Tovey, 2555 Roberts Road, Melbourne. Um, desperate times call for desperate measures. God bless everybody. I'm asking you as leaders and all the Americans to beef up their patriotism and stand up for our country and the foundation that's being torn apart and disposed of now to regain our country back for um, us and America and Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. Um, COVID spending, as Ms. Commissioner Smith pointed out last year, that this is not money that's here. It, it's money being printed and we're bankrupting our nation and deflating the dollar to a, a unsustainable value and it's going to be difficult if we don't act now desperate times call for desperate measures this is the day that is called for I have other stuff I have to save my time I thought it was three minutes um, I want to thank our governor I want to thank Scott Ellis for his patriotism and thank Commissioner Infantini for not only hearing but listening and good luck Miss Eden Bentley and thank you for your service and all commissioners and all Americans next to Mr. Abadi thank you for the security and I thought about that but I talked too much as it is and I'm looking for a few minutes of your time within the next couple of weeks, maybe to explain the lagoon and its conditions. And I've been steadily working on the lagoon as well as the beach erosion and the environment and the homeless and the rest of the stuff through God, my higher power. The flyover turned out well, not so much a safety issue with the drainage culverts. Thank you again. Um, the baffle boxes, I believe that they are full and that was one of my issues and one of the people brought it up at the lagoon meeting and you have a full cup. You can't put any more in the cup because it's full and I think we need to revamp all of our ba baffle boxes. The next worldwide thing we have, it's not the straws, the styrofoam, it's these masks. And this is just from one public area and mm -hmm. the Brazilian pepper and all the other stuff. These are masks laying around and how healthy are they and how much COVID or any other sickness do you think's in there as well as other items. 
out of time and God bless you all and thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Tovey. And those were some very good points, sir. Appreciate it. Mr. John Nealon. Good Sir. afternoon. My name is John Nyland. I live at 121 Island Place in Orchid, Florida. I wanted to talk about our fluoridation program today. Uh, <clears throat> there was a, um, a Swiss doctor named Pericles who's been known as the father of toxicology, <clears throat> and he said everything in life is toxic. Water is toxic. <clears throat> Oxygen is toxic if we ingest too much of anything. <clears throat> so to say that fluoride is toxic by itself would, would be meaningless. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the MIMS water plant was nice enough to send me some data <clears throat> from last year of how much hydrofluoric silicic acid, how much of that chemical they put into their water supply. <clears throat> and I wanted to share that with you because I, I think it'll bring home the point how toxic <clears throat> fluoride is. Uh, you can go down to the water plant, and if you take one tablespoon of that hydrofluoric silicic acid and, and consume it, ingest it, uh, you will not make it off the plant property. You, it'll either kill you or uh, uh, injure you for the rest of your life. So uh, by itself, fluoride isn't toxic. It's extremely toxic. <clears throat> so here's the number that I want to share with you guys. Last year... MIMS put in six tons, six tons of hydrofluorosilicic acid into the water supply there. And if you do the math, 99.5% of that toxic, extremely toxic chemical they put into the water supply didn't go to its intended use, meaning it wasn't consumed by the residents in MIMS. It was dumped back into our waterways. It was dumped back into the Indian River Lagoon. It's crazy uh, to continue this fluoridation program. There are less expensive and safer ways <clears throat> and more effective alternatives than our fluoridation program. The CDC has said brushing your teeth with fluoride is safer and more effective than drinking the fluoride and having it go into your bloodstream. If folks in this county would like to give their children fluoride, they can simply buy fluoridated toothpaste. They can buy fluoridated mouthwash. My God, they can go to the grocery store and they can buy fluoridated water. To continue to dump tons of extremely toxic chemicals into our waterways is it's just absolutely absurd. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I don't disagree with you. Ms. Sandra Sullivan. Good morning, Sandra Sullivan, South Patrick Shores. Honorable Chair, uh, in coming to these meetings for the past two years advocating for a response, to protect High Tower and the critical evacuation efficiency beachside. Brevard was a co-applicant on the FCT Phase 2 grant, thus changes to the Joint Phase um, joint phase 1 and 2 um, management plan requires both county and city approval according to FCT. FCT um, <coughs> Florida Administrative Codes applied to the county and the city for capping density. I wanted to just switch topics here for a second to Florida, um, Central Florida Expressway Authority, CFX Director Laura Kelly was at last week's TPO meeting and said, toll roads are the funding mechanism when there is no other alternative. It is a last resort. No one likes to pay tolls. Brevard is not desperate for money to pay for expansion. State Road 528 is our economic engine to the port and space program. In addition to the concern to put local influence 
on the state appointed FCT governing board to impact the outcome of the FCT site high tower, I'm now aware of an even bigger issue that suggests collusion by CFX and other entities to put influence on the board to get permission to use FCT site split Oak Forest for their new highway across the, the state. Working to put influence on the FCT board, I suggest crosses an ethics line to get a special privilege. And the concern is Commissioner Smith and former Commissioner Barfield were involved in that. Um, since the last meeting, more records requests to CFX show more entities discussing what they call an alignment discussion in reference to the Florida Communities Trust Split Oak Forest and corresponding emails on the open vacancies on the FCT governing board, the entity that makes the management plan changes to an FCT site when it is controversial. According to Kurt Smith's letter to the state representatives, he indicated a new route to Pineda or Post Road. I recently learned that this route as planned will go through the FCT site called Split Oak. In February, Barfield wrote Smith about these two routes with attached documentation about Split Oak. Barfield was on the CFX board when the planning began to go through Split Oak and continues to serve on the environmental committee where, which was discussed in a February meeting. Commissioner Smith sits on the CFX board and a potential conflict of interest form clearly establishes guidelines for avoiding such an issue. Um, this should concern um, everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Lober, sir. Just real briefly, and I, I want to be careful how I phrase this, um, but I, I think I, I need to put it out there just to kind of put it all on the table. There have been things, not just at today's meeting, but in prior meetings um, that Ms. Sullivan said that I, I absolutely agree with, and there have been things that she said that I absolutely disagree with. The, the one thing I would just caution, not just Ms. Sullivan, but everyone regarding is the use of terms that have particular connotations. Uh, I'm not saying that any particular conclusion or conclusions of Ms. Sullivan are or are not correct. I really, you know, I, I, I think a lot of them are subjective. When you're talking about something is unethical, um, unless there's a specific rule on point, ethics are subjective when the rules aren't on point. Um, when you're talking about the facts upon which you draw those conclusions, I don't, I don't know what those facts necessarily are, certainly not in whole, but I, I think caution is oftentimes advised when terms like collusion are used, because implicit in that type of a word is the idea that something is not necessarily just wrongful, but potentially even illegal uh, or otherwise prohibited. So. Um, just as I agree with some things that Ms. Sullivan says and disagree with other things that she says, I'll, I'll say the same is absolutely true with my colleague here, Commissioner Smith. Uh, there's some things that he says that I, I think are brilliant, and there's some other things that I think are not quite as brilliant as some of his brilliant comments. And I'm, I'm sure he, he could say the same with respect to me. Um, Gee, you think? Yeah, I, I do think. I do think, <laughs> Commissioner Smith. But I, I would just, I would just caution when certain terms are used, whether it's special privilege which is defined in state statute, mm -hmm. the common understanding isn't necessarily the legal definition and the, the operative portion when we're talking about a, a term of art like that, at least for that particular term is found in statute. And there, there, are, there are a lot of intricacies when it comes to what's permissible and what's not permissible. So I, I think maybe the most, I don't know compelling, but maybe the most appropriate way in my subjective opinion to try to get a point across um, and to win people over who haven't yet formulated an opinion or who may be flexible enough based upon new information to change that opinion is to lay out the facts upon which you're drawing conclusions rather than just drawing those conclusions. Uh, if you've done, for instance, a public records request and you found that a communication took place on a particular date, tell us what that public records request was, tell us what the communication said uh, that leads you to believe that there was collusion or whatever you think there may have been, and then let us draw the conclusion from there in terms of whether there's something that's permissible or not. We may agree with you, we may agree with you in part, we may disagree with you, but I, I think focusing on the conclusion rather than what leads you to that conclusion 
is skipping a couple of steps, and, and frankly, it, it makes it harder to even potentially jump on board simply because we're missing that foundation that we need to even potentially get to the end, end result or the conclusion. But I, I do appreciate Ms. Sullivan taking the time to, to come up. I think most folks uh, are more apt just to complain to their friends and neighbors about how terrible government is at various levels. It does take something special, whether I agree with someone or disagree with them, to, to come up to a county commission meeting and speak their mind. So I think that's commendable. But again, I, I'm not, with respect to this, adopting or refusing to adopt any particular conclusion. I, I just, I think more, more work in terms of the basis would be beneficial to show. All that to say, typically when people don't agree with us, they usually say your mama. So. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna move into um, item H1. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this is a petition to vacate a portion of a public right-of-way on Tax Drive. It's requested that the Board conduct a public hearing to consider vacating part of public right-of-way. Uh, the petitioner is requesting vacating a portion of 50 feet. It's uh, simultaneously requesting approval of a resolution access easement, providing FPNL an easement requested, which will be uh, later considered under J3. There are no objections. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Smith, sir. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, and I'll make a motion to approve. Can I have a second. motion in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Item H3. I'll move to approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Ms. Waugh, do you want to tell us what it is, real quick? Yes, no Madam cards. Chair. This is a request for approval of a non avalorm assessment to be imposed solely on Brevard County for profit and non profit hospitals that are located on properties that are either owned or have a leasehold interest in. It authorizes the chair to sign their rate resolution and authorizes the county manager to implement all necessary budget changes. There are 10 not-for-profit and for-profit hospitals located in Brevard County, and each have been noticed of this meeting. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Zonka? Yeah, based on the advice of um, our county attorney, I have to abstain as being an employee of one of the entities. Yes, ma'am. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Commissioner Tobias, do we still have you, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Item passes um, 4 0 with Commissioner Zonka um, abstaining. Item I 1. Good morning, ma'am. Item I 1 is requesting that the Board of County Commissioners approve the following, which is utilizing a GovDeal source well contract, utilizing George Gideon Auctioneers as a secondary vendor, authorizing the county manager to execute all contracts and contract documents for auctioneer services for Brevard County. We went out under a request for proposal to seek, seek contractors to sell surplus property for the county. Gov deals came back uh, as well as Gideon and selection committee was held. Gov deals was rated number one. However, the contract that we want to piggyback was more lucrative than the contract that was proposed. So we're asking for permission to piggyback that contract and then authorizing George Gideon, who was rated number two, to be the secondary vendor for items that would not sell under the Gov Deals contract. So moved E2. Okay, motion by Commissioner Loper. Second. Second. By Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Item I3. Yes, Madam Chair and Commissioners, this is a request to allocate not to exceed 44 million of the American Rescue Plan Act funding to qualified capital projects and equipment within each commission district. Authorize purchasing services to issue a competitive solicitation and within each district allocations may be reprioritized by each commissioner once the bids are received. Authorize the county manager to implement all necessary budget changes and execute all contracts, contract amendments, tax orders, and with the approval of the county attorney's office, risk management, and purchasing services. 
Madam Chair, I'd move to approve it, assuming there are no cards, but I, I would just like to clarify that my motion contemplates that reprioritization must occur within the items that are actually listed um, in the agenda item here. So it's not that they can pull something that's not listed here and reprioritize that onto the list. So it's, it's got to be listed on what we've got, but I'm, I'm fine approving it otherwise. Okay, a motion as long as it stays within that scope. Yes, correct? ma'am. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Moving into item J1. Mr. Cockings, before you start, I, I just want to make a statement. Up in um, my district, we have a lot of undeveloped property still. There are large tracts of land. And I have, well, there's a few, but I have specific, specifically one gentleman that owns large tracts, and he subdivided them with no connection to county roads. The problem with this is we have to have it connect to a road for them to be able to get permit because we have to get emergency vehicles back there. So this is a problem we have coming up in District 1 mostly. And the problem is, is like when they, when you do this, if, if we, if we don't stick with what we have in play, every taxpayer in the county has to pay for making this property where it should be to make it where it should have been to be built. And I'm not sure that's fair to put the responsibility on, on every other person. Plus they're getting the properties up there for, for a minimal cost because it is kind of landlocked at the time. Now we're willing to work with them to help them do a dirt road are trying to figure out a way to have them do flag lots. So we've been working very hard with this, but we're gonna have a few of these come up here that, uh, that I'm not in favor of approving, and this is gonna be one of them today, but Mr. Cockings, if you would, and I do have two cards on this. Yes, so this is a request for the board to consider a waiver of section 62102C to allow the applicant to construct a home on a paper right of way without constructing an unpaved road within the county right of way and without providing the maintenance for the roadway and without entering into a proportionate fair share assessment. Um, this application comes to you, they're proposing to you use a paper right of way. It's about 647 feet to go south down to uh, Burkholm Road. The applicant did submit an application about a year ago to go to the north, to go to Welty. It was about 130 feet. That application was approved, however, at that time, we could not um, confirm that their lot was a non-conforming lot of record, so we couldn't issue a permit. So the application was withdrawn, their money was returned, and um, then they came back in and made this application. There is a small wetland that way that would have to be impacted if they were to go that direction. But as um, for, for the board's knowledge here, the um, as Commissioner Pritchett mentioned, the section 62102 was adopted in 1991 and it was primarily to aid residents with developing lots that were been created prior to the subdivision regs subdivision regs were adopted in 1970 so we had about 90 years of development without infrastructure being provided to support those those developments and so it, if you have any questions we're happy to answer them thank you sir um mr Hawkins, you had also mentioned to me you guys were working with them to try to help them get a easier path where they would mitigate the wetlands and you told me there's 0.15 of the wet and you said it'd be about a $15,000 price which is a lot cheaper than constructing a road going down to the other road correct that it is um, what we they've provided an environmental assessment and so an environmental assessment kind of gives us an indication of where that wetland is okay it's a good um, estimating tool Thank you for, for helping them come up with an idea. I have two cards, Miss Julie Gold. Thank you. Hi, ma'am. Uh, this is Crystal. Okay. Hi, I'm the, I'm the homeowner, I the property you. owner. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, okay, this has been a really long process for us. It's, it's been very difficult. We have tried so many different ways to be able to, all we want to do is build a house on our piece of property. Um, and the way that the property was divided before we purchased it, as he was saying, it was, it was divided a long time ago and it wasn't divided properly, I guess. And we're the ones that are having to deal with that and fix the situation. And all we're asking for is a little bit of help here. It's, it's extremely expensive to mitigate the wetlands and we don't want to have to tear down anything that's there. It's, you know, it's, it's a really nice piece of property up there in MIMS. It's everybody likes MIMS because it has 
you know, surrounding woods and things like that that keep everything private for everybody. And we don't want to tear any of that down in regards to any of the other homeowners that are there. I to agree. keep their privacy you, as well. I've been throwing people out a couple of ideas. Maybe you can buy a little flag lot through one of the others and, and hook up to one of the other upper roads. But other than that, I think what staff gave you is probably your cheapest route to do it. So um, I'm, I'm going to recommend you do that. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to vote in favor of your request, but as far as helping you come up with other creative ideas within our code, I'm all in. So. I believe you've tried. I was going to say, I think I've tried. We went to all of the other homeowners around there, and the only directions that we'd they be able to it. get a flag lot through their properties runs like right through where their house would be or something gotcha. like that. It doesn't, none yeah. of it is conducive to yeah. making it easy for them. I'm, I'm really um, sorry for this predicament. I have a bunch of these coming down the road. I got one fellow that just sub subdivided everything, and, and everybody's trying to figure this out, and I'm really sorry about well, there, it. There's one access road that's already been there. It's not not paved or anything, but there is a dirt road, and there's a home right there that uses that road. It, that uses and that has road for access. like 30 yeah, years. We, we can't do it. I went through with Mr. Cockings over and over trying to figure out a way to do this. Your, your cheapest your path is going to be to mitigate that wet. And, and, and then build, build a road. Yeah. How is that cheaper? Well, it's either that you're going to you're gonna have to build, build a road. It's going to you're going to have double. to build a road straight down to Burke Home, which is going to cost you a fortune. But there's already so. a road there. That's that's my issue. Is that there's already a dirt road that's there that is half paved. It, it has from the to other be a, it has to be a standard road when you start having all these houses come off of it because we have to get emergency vehicles in it at this time because we have liabilities. It's plenty wide enough for emergency I mean, vehicles. It's just not going to work. I'm just telling you. I'm, I've tried to be extremely patient and calm with this over the last couple of years, okay? It's, I do not understand why, as someone who is an advocate for property rights, own, property owner rights, that you would deny this. The, the piece well, of property that I'm asking for. I'm everybody else. For, I'm, I'm going to do a trust it soon doesn't affect that everybody anyone. that buys a house out there, because I have everybody yelling they want the roads, roads paved, and there's no way to pave it. So soon when people start permitting, I'm working on putting some money in a trust to where they have to pay for their own roads being paved down the road when we go to do it. So this is a very expensive part of the county. It's a place where we have these undeveloped areas and there is an infrastructure. And I, I, I'm sorry, I wish you would have done due diligence when you got it and made sure that you had access I did. to the road. Well, I actually called the county and spoke to several people about it. You might have caught it. So I don't know, I have this popping up all over. I'm just telling you, you're not I did do my due diligence alone. though, and that's that's the issue is I did it and the, the county that's records were wrong. Um, I'm sorry, ma'am, I just disagree on it. Thank you though. Thank you. Commissioner Lober. Madam Chair, um, this is something that falls in your district. Uh, what would you like the motion to be? I, I vote to deny this. That's my motion. Okay, I have a motion to deny. I'll second, and I'd like to explain why. I from from my discussion, because I'm afraid this would come up in other parts of the county. The problem exists that if we were to do something like this for one individual, we would have to do it for everybody. We, we got a bunch. Coming. We have we have we have a standard involved right now that requires that a paved road be be constructed before the properties are built on. Is that correct? The um, if you come in and subdivide property today, you have to pave the roadway and provide right. all the infrastructure. So through the that only process. the only option available to them is for them to pay for a paving or to get their surrounding neighbors to kick in and pave that road. So, so when it's when the right of way was created prior to um, seventy eight or seventy when the subdivision regs were adopted, we have this dirt road paving process which allows the board to enter into an agreement for a property owner to construct a dirt road to county standard and then they have they're responsible for the maintenance of that roadway and then once we get to fifty percent of the building permits along that those fifty percent of the lots along that right of way have been permitted, then they are subject to an assessment for the paving of of that roadway. So it is a user based fee that, that gets the benefit and gets the um, and pays for the improvements. Thank you, sir. You're much more eloquent and better versed than I am. But that's what I was trying to say. Thank you, sir. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Um, just to give you guys a heads up, I think next meeting we're going to have another one come up that um, 
uh, it's just I got some information on that next time. But. Commissioner Tobias, did you want to say something, sir? Thank you. No, he, we lost him. Okay, we're moving into item J2. Good morning, commissioners. This is permission for staff to pursue grants and or private funding to design and engineer a regional mooring field in District 2. Uh, it would include authority for the county manager to execute any resulting grant or funding contracts. Um, and then if we're successful in coming up with a, a reasonable design and engineering proposal, that would come back to the commission before uh, implementing any sort of mooring field. Thank you. Commissioner Lober. Any cards? No, sir. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0, item J3. Good morning again, commissioners. This one is uh, tied to H1. This is an access easement warranty deed and resolution uh, asking to approve and accept uh, the attached access easement and warranty deed and for the chair to execute the attached resolution. It is for the development of a warehouse complex known as uh, Welty Drive Warehouses um, in relation to a site plan requirement for stormwater pond enabled for us to uh, relocate an FP&L power pole for continued service to uh, the railroad. There are no objections. Commissioner Smith. Move to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Smith. Second. Second by Commissioner Lober. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0, I think. Commissioner Tobias, do we have you? I'm passes 4-0. Item J5. Madam Chair, so this is the actual um, review of the two leases that were in discussion prior uh, for our office move, 5,500 square feet in Cocoa Beach and an 800 square foot visitor center. Motion approved. <laughs> second. I have a motion right, by Commissioner Lover, second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Oh, there you are, Commissioner Tobias. Passes 4-1 with Commissioner Tobias in objection. Moving into the next item. Uh, J-6, Madam Chair, is uh, approval of $150,000 in grants for 17 um, cultural events. Um, just a quick note, this was the item that last year the board, I think, gave quite a bit of very good specific direction. Um, the TDC and its committees went back and reworked the guidelines. Um, and I think they work because there were 23 actual applicants, four did not make it into the application process because they didn't qualify, and then two did not re get the scoring level that was required. So uh, we went from 23 down to 17. So these uh, all have, I believe, a good ROI uh, relative to tourism. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Motion approved. Motion approved by Commissioner Second. Lober. Second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Passes 4 1 with Commissioner Tobias an objection. Item J7. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, J7 is consideration and approval of a board policy relating to Commissioner District Office budgets. Uh, it was requested on August 5th that staff draft this policy and so it was drafted based on the input we received at that meeting thank you ma'am i just wanted to mention that i i think um, mr fuscus a while ago came up and made this recommendation and um so at the time we were still kind of getting settled in i think as of this time we're all kind of pretty much established where we're going to be as commissioners and I, I think we have done a good job of establishing probably what we need to do to, to complete our job so I thought this might be a smart thing to do because we'll be getting new commissioners down the road and and I, I think moving forward that um, as if we hit past a peak it might be good to, to bring it in and let the commissioners have a conversation on it but I highly respect all you guys I think you you're all very frugal I appreciate all the work that, that we do, so I thought it just might be a good idea to bring this. And I <clears throat> want to thank county staff for um, putting together 
all of the data. I think it, it's, it just shows what a good job all the commissioners are doing. So I just want to open with that. Commissioner Lover, you have a light on, sir. All right, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, is the, is the guy who spends the least. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of this. I think you it do makes a good sense. Job. I appreciate that. I, I have to thank my staff. We have the, the slimmest staff in terms of numbers of, of FTEs, but they do a stellar job. I, I just want to reiterate um, my understanding from the prior time this came up. What you're proposing will not change my ability within the overall office budget. Same scope. You have the same Perfect. scope, plus you have a little bit more flexibility since you're the lowest. That, like, if you go on a like if you want to go to the space symposium, it would be with it be within Just your curious. budget. So, uh, within the same scope of what we do, I think this. I think we're all pretty settled now. We we've, we've kind of accomplished a bit. So you you have quite a wiggle room. Yeah, the, you are the, the only lowest. the only thing I would ask that we incorporate in the motion because this is something that's all encompassing, is that we we allow for and authorize if, for instance, and I, I haven't had to do it up to this point, at least not for anything major that I can think of. If instead of bringing in an additional FTE or a part-time employee, if I have a project, whatever it may be, that I need to bring someone on a contract basis on, um, instead of bringing them on as a, a, through the full hiring process, I'd like to also authorize, as we pass this, individual commission offices using the same budget, not to, to raise it, to bring on board folks on a contract basis for individual projects as, as may need be, uh, and allowing with that to have uh, HR or risk management run through whatever they feel is appropriate as far as vetting them, if they think vetting them is appropriate for whatever the scope of the contract may be. So for instance, if I've got, uh, and I've got this coming up in a little bit, a mailing going out to about 900 constituents of mine in Snug Harbor uh, following our um, auto aid agreement with Patrick Space Force Base, um, we're going to do some of that in-house, we're going to do some of that out-of-house, uh, but the bottom line is I want to make sure whatever it is, if I have a, a specific project like that or like um, really like anything that pertains to governmental business, that if we could spend the money on an employee, we could also spend it on someone as a contractor. Well, Commissioner Lover, let me ask you this. Let me think about that a little bit. And I, I like the idea that you would run it through HR to do it because it is a contract employee, therefore you're entering a contract. Wouldn't it be easier just to use it as a project and pay it out of your budget as part of your fund and not and not do that, but pay for, for something you're doing? I just want to make sure I'm allowed to do that because that's at the end of the day, that's what I'm looking to do. Because I, I can tell you, for instance, if, if for whatever reason um, there were a question as to whether or not that's permissible, I just think explicitly allowing it as part of this motion clears it up. That would be within the scope because you already use part of your funds for mailing. Yeah, but so I, if, it, if it's not mailing, scope. let's say, for instance, it's door knocking and saying, hey, we're going to be digging up the force main in your backyard tomorrow for a street that's three blocks or 10 blocks or 100 blocks, as long as it's within the office's budget, I just want to make sure if someone, let's say there's uh, an entity or a company that would do the outreach for us, uh, whether it's Tetratech or whomever. Okay, can you think of, of a way to frame that so we, it ends up being put into the scope just so that Think through it a few minutes and think of a framework for it. Can we re revisit this in just maybe two minutes and I'll have you yes. some good language? Yes, that would be great. Okay, I'm sorry to kind yeah, of Chair. shift this. Yes, sir. Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and I generally appreciate the conservative idea of uh, putting limits on our spending. And I, I honestly thank you for putting this forward. Um, that being said, I think there's no question that for this to be uh, less of a political game, um, the calculation has to include basic things such as rent, utilities, and maintenance. Uh, no budget made by a homeowner or a business uh, would never include uh, these basic things. And yes, it's calculated differently by uh, uh, facilities management, but it still is part of um, the office uh, budget as the title uh, insinuates. So, I have a uh, I have a revised policy uh, that adds in um, uh, that Mr. Bonte has and can pass out. I believe that that adds in and uh, building cost printing and postage. It Thank says you. building costs shall include but are not limited to rent, just value of county property, utility costs, maintenance. So it adds in all the things that certainly uh, our offices. Uh, spend on. I think this makes it a more rounded and a more fair process 
Obviously, the 380,000 would need to change, um, and I wouldn't care what that new number would be. I just think it would be. I, I just think it's uh, more fair to include a holistic approach instead of picking out certain items and not including others. Okay, Commissioner Tobias, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but let me throw this thought out to you. Up in my district, it's a lot cheaper to survive than probably in yours or Commissioner Zonka's because you guys, you just live in a higher area. And then we have Commissioner Smith that's here in the VR, and I imagine that allocation would be fairly high from the numbers mm -hmm. that I saw from Jill. So just something to kick around um, because that would probably open up my district with a lot more funds that I don't know if I necessarily need. So. The rent part, I, I probably don't disagree with you on the other as far as utilities, but rent um, probably could be one that could be a little more difficult because you guys do need to be in an area where you can do your jobs adequately as well. I kind of found up north that that's so important that you'll be able to be in the middle of the community. So let me throw that idea out to you, sir, to consider for a few minutes and Commissioner Zonka. Yeah, and that, that was my only concern is the equity on the rent. We obviously, we live in as, our office in as small a space as we can, but we have had to rent because of the need of the sheriff's office at our Sarno, where we used to be on Sarno. Um, so we, we, we sought it out. Uh, previous county manager um, really worked hard to find us an affordable place that was, that was not just big enough just for our small staff, but that it wasn't too luxurious. But I don't know that equating that with somebody else who maybe has to pay more or less is the fair way to go. I think that that could help or hinder an office and I don't think that that I don't think it again I think you would be opening up budgets to be probably much more significant it would be higher you know for um, for certain offices so I don't know that that's a it could it would be equitable so I don't think I I don't think I agree with that part. I wouldn't mind throwing in there that possibly that um, if, if a commissioner moves that has to come before the board which we discussion. did before we did do it yeah. we just did it yeah Commissioner Lober Okay, um, with respect to this, I, I don't think it's going to impact me one way or the other, frankly, because we're so much, so much lower than the, uh, than the highest. But with a cost allocation number, and I, I addressed this a little bit earlier in the other item, it's, it's kind of an arbitrary number. Um, I, I think Commissioner Smith, frankly, would be hurt most by, by implementing that cost allocation number because there's no question that space in the Vera Government Center is more valuable than the the dungeon that my office is in <laughs> uh, and I, i'm not trying to get out We're of it i'm really not yeah and yeah. I, if you guys want to pity me a little to have some sympathy and support a couple of my items you might not otherwise have supported go for it um but the the bottom line is i'm okay if there's asbestos in the walls i'm okay if there's carpet that's as old as i am it is what it is but i i just think that the number that's assigned to that and i think it was something like 12 or fifteen thousand in cost allocation there's not a person on this planet that would pay <laughs> um, we don't, with any of the other space, it went vacant for a while, and I, I talked to Mr. Abate and said, hey, if there are nonprofits that we extend nominal leases to, just extend it to them in my building. We have ample parking, we have plenty of space, uh, and frankly, they ripped out some of the walls with asbestos in the recent past to work them up for some of the, the nonprofit CBOs. Uh, I had a conversation last week with someone in my office who was with Guardian Ad Litem um, in the, uh, the Vieira Courthouse just opposite us here, who expressed the the lack of enthusiasm of the prospect of their having potentially moved into the building based on the conditions. So I, I just, if you're going to do it, I'm not going to make a big fuss about it. I, I don't know that it's fair to implement the cost allocation in the total number. If you want to, it's not going to hurt me, but I, I just don't know that it's necessarily appropriate because the real cost is not that number. The real cost is the opportunity cost, which oftentimes is, is negligible. So I'll, I'll support whatever the board wants on this. I just wanted to point out that that number is kind of an artificial number. Okay, I, I agree. I, I think if we did that, it's gonna greatly affect Commissioner Zonka and um, her other costs aren't, aren't very high. So I, 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 would, I would rather not do it because mine are the lowest and I don't think that's fair either because I have lived in a lower rental area. Um, a quick question. I want to throw this out to you, Commissioner Lober. You gave me time to think about it. In my office, we um, left Marsha on for a little while while we were training the staff, and she was in a temp position, didn't get any benefits. So I think you still can accomplish what you want to accomplish the other way, I, and that we don't have to contract. It's I, I think thing. I have some good language for you. So let me, if it's all right, I'll just run it by you real quick. Okay. And I've, I've just tried to kind of jot it down as quickly as I could, and I'm sorry if Ms. Bentley <laughs> doesn't love it, but hopefully she can live with it potentially. Um, 
it would approve this and also authorize commissioners to expend funds without increasing the aggregate total authorized for expenditure on contractors who would perform services which might otherwise be performed or which would otherwise be performed by Brevard County staff members within an individual commission office. It would also allow HR to run background uh, on any such contractor as may be appropriate given the scope of work. I think a temp employee would be the same thing for you. But the and problem is there are folks there. that may not want to go through that. If there's an entity that would perform the service for me, oh. they're not going to necessarily want to go through getting badged and credentialed and coming in and doing all that, but they may be fine having their background run. Okay. The only thing I get to hang up with, and you're the lawyer and you would know this, is contract. I don't know if we should be entering contracts on our own. And a 1099 is a contract employee. So think about that a second, well, Commissioner. Okay. 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 You know, just, br just briefly, I mean, you're, you're technically entering a contract if you're employing someone in, you know, in, in a slightly different sense. With the county, though. Right, but it's We're one way or the other, it's, it's authorizing expenditure of funds. So would the county enter into the contract with them for you? Is that how it would work? Yes, and it would be limited to, to the scope. So basically, it would authorize us to bring someone on a contract basis with who otherwise county, would be an employee the doing county, the same exact and thing. the county would enter the 1099 with the person. Yes. Okay, Commissioner Zonka. Yeah, I, I have a, a little bit of concern with that, only because I, I think that you know our employees, although our offices are separate and we kind of make the rules and the and set the standard for what we expect in each district office. I think, in an, in an order to be transparent and in order to make sure that you know we have good quality people, contract or not, working for us, they should be employees, even if temporary. Even if 1099 employees, they should still be county employees and still subject to the same rules because they're essentially working, even if it's under contract for the government. So. Yeah, I, I don't like that. Mr. Lover, I, I don't think I would deny anything you wanted to do with something anyways. Why don't um, you, you have the extra budget? I don't know how to work this. You, you well, kind of threw this out on me. Yeah, let me let me just. So, but I, I, I wouldn't deny you if you brought up and said, I've got this, I'm doing this. And I'll, mean, I'll give you another example. But so what if the next guy comes after you, yours down the road, and we got a real nut job? You know? Well, this, this wouldn't give him any additional funds to hire someone to do something that he couldn't otherwise hire them to do. This is if, if you have some scope of work that you need to get accomplished where it's either more, more easily accomplished with an outside entity or individual or alternatively where an outside entity or individual just doesn't want to go through all the hassle. So let's say, for instance, our, our mail service that facilities has a contract with, they're not county employees. Uh, we can go in the outbound mail from our commission offices, put, put a, a letter without sealing it. They're going to go moisten the flap, seal it, and then put postage on it, but they're not county employees. Uh, I, I think technically we can probably pay for it anyway, even without an explicit allowance, but this would take out any ambiguity whatsoever as far as our being allowed to do that, because technically if, if, you're, if you're of the position or someone's of the position that we just can't hire contractors because technically it's a contract, then we wouldn't even be able to do what facilities has done with respect to bringing on someone to, to moisten, seal, and post envelopes. And I, I, in terms of the liability for the county, there may actually be an offset in the sense that if they're a contractor and you don't have the same level of control over how they accomplish it, if someone cuts their hand off, God forbid, using one of the machines to seal, to moisten, seal, and post, it's going to be harder for them to come into the county's pockets than it, it otherwise would be if they were a county employee. So in a sense, there's less liability as opposed to more. But with the less in liability, you are giving up a degree of control. I do love the way you think out of the box, though. You've been very creative in the past. Let me think on it a bit. Sure. But you still, even if I agree to this, which I'm still struggling with, you still have to come up with the scope that it stays within the administrative expense scope as it is. So it would be mailing and these types of things we already do with the administrative funds. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking if, if it's cheaper or easier to have someone do the same thing using the same money, but technically not have them as an employee, that's all I'm trying to accomplish. I, I got gotcha. you. So it has to still within the scope of what we're using it for. Can, can yeah, and I, I don't want to limit it specifically to mailing, because like I said, if we're having something done just as a comes to my head example, if we're ripping out a force main or we're connecting people to, uh, well, let's say we're doing smoke testing for laterals and we're gonna do it over a mile long street, if someone says, hey, I'll knock the door for you for 200 bucks, I'll hit every single door. Uh, if we just don't wanna do it because it's cheaper for us on an opportunity cost basis to have someone go out and do it, an entity, let's say, let the PR firm go look pretty, knock on the doors and say, hey, we're gonna be doing this. 
Then you need to love and kisses. Word of scope for me of what we're using within the administrative, sir. Okay, Commissioner Smith. Yeah, I'm kind of ambivalent about this as well. I agree that it might be helpful um, to have a budget limit. However, uh, I can't see any reasonable cause to hire an outside entity to do something that our own facilities can take care of. You just, we have the expertise, we have the talent, and if there were some situation that didn't exist, that then the, the answer is simple, then you have to go outside. But then I would still encourage facilities to be the ones that would go outside their office or their work staff to find someone to get it done because that's their job rather than the individual commissioner. So I don't know. Well, I would suggest that if we have this much question on this, why don't we just table it until the next meeting? Okay, sir. Commissioner Sanka. Yeah, I would just say again, I think it's it's about transparency and I think, you know, I don't think commission offices are gonna have to knock on your door on doors for utilities. I mean I think we have a utility division that does that and we have we have people or or their contractors that have been already vetted through the county, either through the RFP or procurement process. So again, they're still vetted through our processes. And I get a little leery about, you know, commission offices hiring private contractors to do door knocking of any sort. So again, I think I think it needs to be as transparent as possible. Even if it's part time, even if it's whatever agreement you have with the employee is yours, but I think it needs to be out there and I think it needs to be transparent. Commissioner Tobias, sir. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm, I would prefer that we wait on this a little bit. Uh, I, I'm looking at uh, a, a document I'm sure everyone has, uh, Commission District office, ex office Expenditures Fiscal Year 2018 through 2020 uh, that has the 2021 year to date and you know, I've been. Everyone claims they have the lowest numbers, and 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 you know, based on the what I'm looking at here, uh, even you know, Madam Chair, even when you back out the uh, facility cost allocation, which yours is ninety three sixty six, that would put you at two three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which potentially would put you over the $380,000 limit this I, year. I don't have I'm those numbers, concerned. Commissioner Tobias. Can you tell me what sheet you're looking at? Uh, Ms. Hayes did a commission district office expenditures fiscal year 2018 through fiscal year 2020 and fiscal year 2021 year to date uh, data of as of August 25th, 2021. Okay, is this the one he's talking about right here? No, I asked her. Your, your off district one is 360,625. Yes, sir, I, I've got that right there. And um, yep. I, I see what you're saying. Part of that was a one time, well, I know I don't have to go through it with you right now because you're not you challenging know, I, me yeah, on that. I, I get it. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So my, my concern, you know, I, I'm all I'm all for transparency. I'm all for limits, but I'm 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 concerned that you had a one-time cost here, yeah. um, which looks as though it was a wise move to long term. However, there was an upfront pretty expensive moving cost of twenty six thousand six hundred and forty dollars. Again, it's only one time, but it would temporarily put you gotcha. uh, over the limit, assuming your funding continues to go this way. I got you. So, and I give you my word, by the way. I'm not, I'm not, I'm yeah. not, arg I'm not, ar I'm I not, arg um, I'm just saying, you know, you know I, I don't think anyone doubts that district two, um, whether you take it out or not is, is the only one that begins with a two. So district two, without a doubt is, is, is clearly, uh, the lowest three and four within a thousand dollars of the, uh, uh, a fifteen hundred dollars of each other. Um, and and then District Five is is in the neighborhood, so we're all we're all relatively close uh, with each other. Um, my con my concern is again, if you get a one time expense like you incurred, it potentially could put one of these, you know, uh, one of us over this one of us over this one. 
Okay, I, I, I hear you. Um, Commissioner Tobias, I wish you were here in person. It might be a little easier. So I, um, I love all this conversation. I think it was necessary. It might be good to bring it back. Hold on just a second, sir. Might be good to, to bring it back and, and get some, some numbers, what we look like we're moving forward. But again, I, I think we're all doing a good job. I think we just need to come up with what we think the top number should be for um, future commissions. Because I think you would agree with me now, sir, we're all pretty much settled. So I, I think we need to, as Mr. Fuskis said, set some kind of criteria for future commissions. So, um, Madam Chair, we... Yes, sir. We, we the, these th this is all part of the budget. So yes. in other words, we, we we vote on this as a commission. We just don't normally break it down in in in, in this detail. However, we, we take responsibility. I I have voted uh, every time I vote for a budget. I certainly vote for the uh, things that make up your as well as the other, uh, including myself, the other four uh, commission districts. So. Um, you know, if Mr. Fuskis or anyone else has issues uh, specifically with the way that we run our office or how we spend, that may be better than than looking at it. Um, you know, from a from a larger perspective, because I mean, I think this was a good exercise, and I, I, it's it's interesting how um, the offices decide to spend their resources one way or another. Maybe. You know, our office could do better. Maybe other offices could do better. Maybe there'll be things that come out of it. But uh, putting in a, an arbitrary number um, that is very realistically one office <clears throat> year will 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 surpass. Um, you know, I think puts in all honesty would put you in a difficult would put you in a difficult uh, position, and I certainly would not support that. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. But I think this is going to be more for moving forward. The uh, one-time cost you're talking about, I had a long-term employee that had worked for the county 30 years. They had to do a payout, I think, of 19000 when she left. And then we had a, um, the office move. But And I would have brought it. I did bring it to you guys, as a matter of fact. But over the, um, the rest of the years, we're going to end up with a positive, I think it's almost like $20,000 of what we would have spent if we hadn't have moved. And I know, I know you're appreciative of that. But that's where I think when you came in with the wisdom earlier about the facility, we should probably be bringing moves up to the commission and discuss numbers before we do that. But I, I'm still going to support a, a cap on us um, just so that we give a little bit more comfort as well to the county manager because as right now we can pretty much do what we want with our budgets and we have been very responsible. But I can't speak to future commissions that come in. I hope they're good guys, but you just don't know. So I, I'm just still going to support a cap. Um, Commissioner Zonka. No, oh, that's an old line. Okay, Commissioner Lober. Madam Chair, just a, a few thoughts. And then I think at the end, I, I am going to recommend that we table this. And I'll make a motion to table it uh, for one meeting. But as far as um, the comment that Commissioner Smith made with respect to if we can do it in-house, we should do it in-house, we're not doing that now. Um, and I'll use an example I've already used, the mailing service. We absolutely can do that in-house. I think every single employee who's sitting in the room is capable of, of licking we're moistening, folding envelope flaps shut, and applying postage. There's no question that we can do that. It's either cheaper, easier, or a combination of the two to send that out, though. So it's not that they're doing something that they otherwise wouldn't be permitted to do. They're simply doing it in a way that's either cheaper and or more efficient for them. So I, I do agree with Commissioner Zonka in that anyone, even as a contractor, should be vetted. Hence the reason that the, the language that I included um, uh, mentioned HR having the ability to run a background check. I'm happy to work with HR and have some better language or more precise language uh, when this comes back. But as far as a level of discomfort having anyone knock, because utilities could knock using my example, utilities may not choose to do so. They may choose to either post something or to advertise it as they're required to by statute, but they may not go the extra mile because there is a cost to knock. Um, and anyone is welcome to be uncomfortable with individuals knocking on behalf of a particular commissioner for any reason, but the fact is nothing prohibits me right now from picking up my phone saying to Fritz, Kika, and Rocket, I want you guys to leave the office today, forward the phones to the voicemail, go knock and tell these people whatever, you know, whatever, whatever the marching orders are. I can tell them to do that as long as it's government business. I have every right to do that right now as to each of you with your office staff. The difference is instead of having a county employee knocking to 
advise whatever it is you're looking to advise them, that they're going to dig their yard up, that they're going to do a smoke test for laterals, whatever the case may be, this would simply allow a contractor to do it if the, if the cost-benefit analysis supports a contractor doing it. If it doesn't, why would I have a contractor in the first place? I'd have my employees do it. But just as we use a contractor for mailing services, I think that it's, it's artificial to have an impediment where we, we say we can't have private business do this when private business may be cheaper and or more efficient. And if they weren't cheaper and or more efficient, I wouldn't use them anyway. Um, beyond that, again, I'm not looking to have anything enabled that otherwise wouldn't be enabled. I'm simply saying instead of having a county staff member do it, we allow in those instances where there's a calculation where the, the cost benefit analysis suggests it's better to have a contractor do it to allow private industry to do it and to have us pay them, again, allowing HR to do the vetting. But I'm, I'm happy to, to work with HR if we table this and come back with some language that may address a couple of the concerns a little better that came up today. So my, my motion is to table it for a meeting. If you'd like to table it for two meetings, I'm, I'm happy to amend the motion to make it table it for two meetings, whatever meeting you want. Be fine. One meeting? One meeting. So we can always table it again as our, our agenda items. So. Okay. All right. My motion is okay. to table it for one meeting. I'll have some better language. I'll try to get it added as an attachment. Do I have a second? No, I have a comment. Oh, you have a comment because I know it was your idea. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Well, I like the idea of the cap because, as you've mentioned a couple of times, if, if the county manager doesn't want to step on any commissioner's toes, there isn't any reason for any future commissioner to get silly with spending money. So the cap is good from that perspective. However, I think that if we go forward with some areas of this that we have each displayed uh, maybe disdain is too strong a word but a reluctance to step on each other's toes when when one of the commissioners wants to do something uh, with regard to their district so um, I would just say that if if most of the cases that Commissioner Lober is using, I, I don't, I think it's apples and oranges. But if you have a cap in his situation and he wants to do what he's really talking about doing is going outside and spending money on something that would be sizable, um, then that could be brought to the commissioners. Yeah. And the commissioners can then make the decision rather than put it on the, put the onus on staff. This way, it's our decision, and if it's reasonable, then we're going to say, yeah, go right ahead and do it. And if we think it isn't reasonable, then we'll just simply say, find another alternative. So I think that would be a better way to handle it. Okay. That's so, just me. So, Commissioner Lober, you got some work to do of how to frame something. Madam Chair, just real works. briefly so that I can, I can make the best use of the time as well. I, I don't necessarily disagree with what Commissioner Smith mentioned. I think maybe the way to address that is to set a cap under which it's okay, mm -hmm. and over which we're expected to come back to the commission. So like five or 10,000, something like that, I think to say if it's a contract under 10,000, as long as it's within your budget, spend it out of comp and benefits. If it's over 10, then come back to the commission. And if there's some concern that I've got some nefarious motive that I'm looking to put in place in the next week, I'm happy to have a moratorium on doing this for the remainder of the year. Yeah, but you might have some nutcase out here accusing you of something that you need oh, they're to gonna have, accuse me that, anyway that we have to have a some kind of a <laughs> uh, grand jury se sequestered so um, oh, they haven't know, done that yet <laughs> uh, yeah well we've had one um, I, I just think for me personally if if you or any other commissioner want to spend your dollars on something for an outside contractor that we can do with in-house I would be reluctant to approve that anyway I'm even just if saying. we can do it cheaper if you can if you can prove somehow in some way that you can do it cheaper than our own facilities can do it uh, surely that should be an argument well that, that also might make it sound like repair staff too much <laughs> well that too so anyway i i think it, it bring it up at the next meeting okay let's see what you can pull off okay let's yeah I, I just last thought on it mr uh, commissioner smith in terms of in terms of the argument, we may be paying staff too much if we can find someone outside to do it no, cheaper. I was joking. You know, I'm just I'm just saying this because yeah, there, there may be some people that joking. take that a little a little too seriously. Joking. If someone has a machine or equipment that would cost us a substantial upfront investment that would enable them to accomplish whatever the task is, 
I want to make sure it's okay. And I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, frankly, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know that we technically need this. And I'll, I'll give you an example. For the mailing that I'm doing uh, to Snug Harbor residents, uh, I'm paying a company to address envelopes, the, the recipient info and the return address to the commission offices. It's a double digit expense. It's not even a hundred bucks that I'm paying them to do that, but technically that's me hiring a contractor. And it's that given that minuscule scope, they've not been vetted by HR and I didn't ask the board for permission to do it, but I, I can't imagine anyone has an issue with me spending under a hundred bucks out of my office budget that's not increasing to have someone print envelopes. So I, I just, I think if we define it, because I think there's some circumstances where clearly no one has an issue with it, I think like that. I think just going to have to frame some scope to it. it yeah, I'll, I'll put some wording together. Because it's, it's ambiguous right now. So I used a three-syllable word. There you go. <laughs> I'll get you a gold star. Commissioner Loeber told me one time, I said, you know, sometimes I throw out words and I'm not sure if they're words. He said, me too, but I just throw them out and nobody knows the difference. <laughs> so I just I would tell on him for a minute. Commissioner Tobias, do you have any closing thoughts, sir, before we um, leave this with a table, sir? No, Madam Chair, I'll support the tabling of this. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion to table and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Moving into item J-8. Commissioners, as you know, the legislative delegation will be meeting soon. Staff prepared a variety of items for the board's consideration, which is included in this agenda item. Uh, extremely briefly, it includes uh, w advanced wastewater treatment facilities, Port St. John and, and South Brevard area, which both need it. Uh, it's Indian River Lagoon, a couple of areas there, uh, looking for support from uh, uh, our delegation. Resiliency as it relates to beach renourishment, and then two major road projects, Ellis Road and uh, uh, 528. So we're looking to see if the board would like to add anything to this or take anything off the list as well as if the board wants to de uh, designate a commissioner to uh, bring this forward to the delegation at its upcoming meeting. Thank you, sir. Commissioners? Let's see. Move to approve. I think this is, I mean, we've, we've, all, we've done this every year. So right. I'm happy to move to approve, but in terms of sending someone, what do you think? I was hoping one I think would uh, Commissioner Tobias would be ideal for that. I agree with you, Commissioner Smith. Commissioner I'll Tobias. Make the okay. I'll second the motion. Wait, I was named the champion last time. Uh, <laughs> you were doubly champion. And you were, and you were so good, we think you should do it again. Especially uh, since you're not here. And especially since I'm returning the favor to you for how many times you've done the same exact thing to me. So you're welcome. I think I got uh, made a chair a while ago, too, at a TPO <laughs> meeting. Okay, Commissioner Zonka. Yeah, and I know it to some, obviously there are gonna be bigger priorities, but I was specifically asked if we could, if we could add the aquarium <clears throat> to this I think as an initiative, good. because mm -hmm. there's already been, you know, I don't know how many millions of dollars at this point. 31. I know, yeah, I was gonna say tens of millions at this point invested in that project. And I know um, obviously anything that the, our legislation, and our legislature could do to support that. Be available, so I think exactly. that would be perfect. And again, I, I know if you've compared to Ellis Road widening and the Indian River Lagoon, it doesn't even, it pales, I, you know, I do. But I think that there's so much invested in that and so much our community has said that they want it. I think that that, you know, we have a nice short list and I would like to see that added. And I think the long-term benefits of that aquarium, um, in fact, I've even had somebody call, it should be called uh, the, the, I forget what the name is now, but I thought it was appropriate. It, it, conjures up the idea that this is something that would be a project that would certainly bring tourists in, but it would also educate the public. And, well, and it's and, got and the and Indian would, River would, Lagoon would, component. Would, and Yeah, and it would also um, probably enhance the opportunity to get more grants for the Indian River. And part of their part of their um, admission fee is going to go mm -hmm. toward the Indian River Lagoon, so that's how we can also tie it in. But I think it's great. I think it's a great project, and I think it's it's moving. We just need to get behind it and support it. And anything our legislature can do to help secure that funding or support that funding would be great. Okay, gentlemen, do you roll that into your motion? Amend your motion. Are you guys okay with it? I defer to the board. Mm -hmm. And I would just ask that maybe we, if we need to refer to uh, Keith Winstead as far as language goes, if we wanted just a couple of lines, you know, if he wants to at least contribute to putting it together. I don't know that we need him, but. You know, he may have some more information that 
that makes this okay. work. So we have a, happy to do that. a motion by Commissioner Lober. Uh, I think by Commissioner Smith in a by second by me. By Commissioner Smith to approve the um, items and adding unto the um, aquarium. Correct, sir? Yes. And the second holds. If that's the desire oh, of the board. Oh, and appointing Commissioner Tobias to go and. Yes. Oh, the most important part, yes. Yeah. To be our representative. He speaks their language. I love it. Yes. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Commissioner Tobias. <laughs> I know that. <it. laughs> I, I, I was, Madam Chair, I was there until we added the aquarium. I, I think it's going to be a very difficult sell to add the uh, legislative delegation in these in these times i will do it because that is absolutely the the, the wisdom of the board uh i'm just uh just a little leery of of, of the aquarium but uh, if that's my task i will i will add it as if it's my own thank you sir appreciate you okay moving into item j9 Good morning commissioners item j9 after an extensive period of negotiations between your management team and the representatives of Brevard County Professional Firefighters Local 2969, the uh, rank and file and supervisory units of that union have tentatively agreed and ratified a new three-year contract uh, with the board. Uh, that, man that contract is supported by your management team and we would make the recommendation to you all now and request that you ratify the agreement as well. Motion to approve. Thank you, have a motion. Second. And a second, I have one card from Mr. Bramson. Be careful, Mike, it looks like you're gonna get your yes vote, so just don't talk him out of it. Uh, this is a, it's a short note. Um, <laughs> and it's been a long time since I've been up here. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, thank you for the board. Uh, actually, just taking this opportunity to come up here and speak obviously in favor of uh, you use the word in, uh, extensive session is actually 26 sessions of negotiations and so what i'm taking this opportunity to do so is to thank you all staff uh, we don't really have a lot of opportunity to engage in the county staff uh, not negotiations not when we ask for certain things to be brought to the table and we never really have the opportunity post negotiations to discuss anything as we uh, run for the hills so i am taking the opportunity obviously in favor and to support uh, the staff's energy and efforts on both both sides of the table uh, for what we have here and what you are voting in uh, today. Uh, this contract, this labor agreement represents fantastic framework on top of a great foundation that we put together uh, through an aligned plan many years ago. It only outlines frameworks and creative foundations for the future challenges and changes uh, that we're about to face uh, in Brevard County um, to meet the needs of the citizens and visitors of Brevard County for public safety. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for um, coming to the table and, and getting a contract ready to go. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? Madam Chair. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, Madam, with your indulgence, I have a couple questions for uh, Jerry and some comments um, that will frame my Most uh, certainly. eventual vote. Yes, sir. Is that okay, Madam Chair? Oh, yes, sir. Most certainly. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Visco, our lowest paid director grosses roughly $90,000. Uh, how many IAFF employees gross more than $90,000? Uh, Commissioner, today under the current contract, we have uh, four uh, unit members that have base salaries in excess of $90,000. Uh, how many BCFR? employees gross more than seventy thousand dollars okay in the uh in in the world of uh, of gross salary we have 185 employees that would gross in excess of seventy thousand dollars thank you how many employees under bcfr gross more than a hundred thousand dollars per year uh, there are 27 employees that gross more than a hundred thousand dollars thank you what did the two highest paid employees gross over their past year and what were their positions uh, in a 12-month uh, period uh, from September 1st, 2020 through August 31st, 2021, uh, we had a, a, a Fire Medic 2 grossed $140,391, and Emergency Vehicle Dispatcher grossed $133,537. Uh, so to be clear, we have a dispatcher making more than most of our employees who hold 
professional degrees such as uh, such as attorneys? Yes, sir. Um, how many staff hours did your negotiations team spend on just the negotiating uh, meetings alone? Uh, just in the preparation, the management team just in preparation for the negotiating sessions and then participating in the sessions themselves. Uh, we estimate about uh, 1,728 man hours uh, for the size of our negotiating team. Thanks. Last year, or, or this upcoming year, assuming the, the budget uh, uh, is approved, what was what was the COLA increase of non-union employees? I believe last year's COLA increase was 2%. Uh, this year's is projected at 1.5. And what is the average salary increase of unionized labor under the first year of this contract to the past? Uh, looks like about a 12.8% average uh, across the contract period. Madam Chair? Please. Thank you. Um, having sat through many hours of these negotiations, I certainly want to thank staff for their diligence and hard work. Uh, the team led by Jerry Visco under the supervision of Mr. Abate was both effective and, and quite tenacious. Of course, when members of this board wear union t-shirts uh, to meetings, there there's only so much that can be done. I hope our staff understands that while I cannot support uh, this agreement, it is certainly not a reflection uh, of their work product. Instead, it is a reflection of the fact that this board chose to increase fees in order to line the pockets of union through this agreement. When this board voted to raise fees 33% or more than $8 million per year and devote 75% of that to union salary, uh, that predetermined the outcome. As a conservative board, it is abhorrent that we treat unionized labor better than we treat our, our non-unionized employees. When we compare a 2% increase to one more than six times that, it's very difficult to vote in favor. These are the same employees who largely refused to get COVID vaccine, even when we're, they were paid to do so. And a public health director noted that citizens could potentially die. Next time a union member complains about the cost of the tires, please remember that 27 of them prior to this 12% increase made more than $100,000 last year. It's for these reasons, I absolutely, as a board member and as a conservative, cannot vote to ratify uh, this agreement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Zonka? Yeah, I, and I, I'm not going to try to get too crazy with the numbers, <clears throat> and I, I know I'm probably just going to throw some things at you that you aren't prepared for questions, these questions. But, I mean, isn't it fair to say that, you know, 90% of these people making over $100,000 a year are continuously mandated for overtime? Overtime is a significant portion of that. Yes, ma'am. And what percentage would you say is the average employee, or, or is it tens of thousands of dollars of an, an overtime? Yes, ma'am. And typically, it's, at least in the last 12 months, it hasn't been by choice, correct? They've been mandated? I'm sorry. I wouldn't say a majority of the overtime has been mandatory. I think the majority of the overtime has been voluntary, especially in the numbers where you get those high numbers, which I think is what your question was. Okay, but you, there was 27. Right, yeah, but I'm saying that, yeah, the highest numbers are not necessarily because those individuals were mandated uh, overtime. There's a lot of mandatory overtime. However, um, the people who have the highest number most likely of, of, of earnings most likely have the highest number of voluntary hours. Okay, so assuming that that's correct, assuming even half, they're still working those hours, correct? Oh, yes, I mean, they're still working in emergency <clears throat> services, still riding on the fire uh, vehicles, still saving lives, still doing their job that they're supposed to those do. Those are required hours, uh, uh, men and women on the street. 24-hour shifts? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And also, too, I mean, and maybe this is just more of a statement than anything. I, I know that this contract was supposed to make up for some increases that they, they forego in previous contracts, correct? I mean, they... as much as anything else, man, this is an effort to make us competitive with uh, the surrounding territories that we've not been able to maintain a competitive posture with over the last several years. Right. The fire assessment gave us that opportunity. We've taken, we've taken advantage of it, and we believe we're in a much better competitive posture than we've been in many years. 
And whether you agree with, with what people make and what they do, they are working the hours and they are doing the time. This is the job that they signed up for and not, not many people and most people in this room wouldn't trade what they do for what they do. So I'm gonna support the contract. I'm just glad you guys finally got it done. Thank you, ma'am. I, I wanna jump in and I'm, I'm glad we got a contract together as well. And you know, I understand the financial part of it, but the problem is is we have a competitive market out there currently and this is what the competition's paying out there as far as firefighters and you have to have firefighters and thank goodness Brevard County has good ones and I know when we did this part of the goal was and I believe you got that in the contract that a lot of these funds are going to hire on lower entry level people so that that overtime cost comes down because that was the concern of the commission and I know you guys agree with that as well so we were hoping to get a, a larger works staff and bring that upper mount from where we hire up to a level to where we could um, get some more employees on. Because if you have the turnover, after you train them, it gets expensive. So I know that was part of our um, conversation. But I hope we continue to work towards um, removing those overtime costs so that you know everybody has a great job, great income, and they enjoy their jobs, and they're not overwhelmed. There's enough staff. So that's, that's the goal here. So I'm, I'm hoping we continue to um, move towards that. I still, and I know it's like a whole nother culture, I would love to move to two 12-hour shifts and still have nice, nice pay for people. I think that might cut down on a lot of the people being exhausted and be able to have the staff. I think the, the cost would get a lot more beneficial to the county, and I think the job enjoyment would get better to the firefighters. But I know that's not a good point because nobody does it anywhere but it might be something to consider into the future. So I'm just gonna leave that right there. And Commissioner Lober, sir. A few thoughts here, and then I'm gonna reiterate a few things that you've mentioned and that Commissioner Zonka mentioned as well. Um, the first thing I, I wanna point out is that department directors are not comps for BCFR employees. They're simply not. They don't assume the same risks. They're not going into burning buildings. They're not dealing with people who are bleeding out of their throats. They're not dealing with responding to calls for service from people that are choking to death from COVID. The average firefighter, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Visco, works substantially greater overtime than nearly all other, other Brevard County employees. That would be correct. I, I agree with Commissioner Tobias in that it's odd that we had a fire medic two earning, and I jotted it down as it was being said because I didn't have the number earlier, $140,391. Yes, sir. Why would they be earning that? As was pointed out, overtime. If we don't want them to earn that, we need to take steps to reduce overtime. The step that we can take that's logical to reduce overtime is to hire more fire medic twos. This, this contract allows us to accomplish that. We should not see folks that are making 140 something thousand a year as fire medic twos. That should be an incredible anomaly. The fact is we've not been competitive with our actual comps. I'm not talking about department directors. I'm not talking about folks that work at, at the Lexus dealership or folks that are doing uh, sign printing or anything else that may be a lower or higher or similar salary. I'm talking other firefighters in comparable positions at comparable departments. We've not been competitive. It's a fact. If you want your 94-year-old grandmother to be worked on by some imbecile who couldn't get, get in in any other department whatsoever, because we have the lowest pay and the lowest standards because we have to have the lowest standards with the lowest pay, then don't approve the contract. That's fine. Have an idiot work on your grandmother. And when she dies as a result of that, I don't want to hear about it. I really don't. Not the grandma, Commissioner Lowe. Okay, fine. Your mom. <laughs> it's not a your mom joke, though. You know, the, the fact is, with dispatchers, it's odd that we have a dispatcher that's earning whatever the number was. It was some six-digit number that was astronomical. I don't think that was a 40 hour work week. I don't think that was a 50 hour work week. I don't think that was a 60 hour work week. I would venture to guess, Mr. Visco, what is that? 80 plus, 100 plus hour work week? We'd have to do the math on that, but you're, 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 if, you're right. If so someone's you're working extensive. two or two and a half jobs, they should make two or two and a half times what the job would normally pay. And that's assuming you're not even paying time and a half for overtime. The, the fact is the people that are making the money are working themselves to the bone. If you want to work 100 hours in a week, you should be paid for working 100 hours in a week. The fact is the environment shouldn't exist where we need someone to work 100 hours in a week. This contract does a lot, or at least is situated to do a lot, to fix that up. I'll tell you, I was proud to wear a yellow shirt. Uh, I'm the guy. Hate me if you want to hate someone for it. I paid for it. 
I would not accept it as a gift. I think I paid 20 or 25 bucks for it, whatever it was, 20 or 25 bucks to cover their costs. I agree, a conservative principle is to, to be a good steward of taxpayer dollars. Another conservative principle is to support public safety. Whether it's mosquito control to keep people from getting mosquito-borne viruses, whether it's BCSO and making sure that the gentleman here in green, who frankly I'd be happy to give blood for, a positive by the way, if either of you guys need it, um, whether it's them or whether it's the firefighters, we need to do our part. I don't want to be the, the lowest paid department anywhere in this vicinity so that we can, we can brag to our people, we were being good stewards of the taxpayer, but, uh, of taxpayer funds, but God forbid you need to call 911, prepare to be crispy in your house. It's not what I want to hear. It's not what my constituents want to hear. When they're violently ill or they're having a seizure, they don't want to hear, well, you saved a couple bucks, so you know, it's going to take us 20 minutes longer to respond, or we're going to send an idiot to your house rather than someone that's a, a decently capable, competent employee. I don't want that. We're not talking about plating the trucks in platinum or gold or, or anything like that. We're not talking about giving people Aston Martins and Lamborghinis. We're talking about being competitive with, with, with the real comps are. So to me, this is an absolute no-brainer. An absolute no-brainer. You know, yes, ma'am. I, I thought you were done. You took All right, I'll shut up. I've said plenty. Mr. Smith, <laughs> you're up, sir. Thank you. All right, I'll weigh in a little bit here. Um, you've heard me say many times uh, defending our uh, firefighters that uh, and EMTs that they perform a terrific service for us. It's obvious to me that uh, I, and I don't think this is an exaggeration, I would say every single individual in this county appreciates the fact that if they have an emergency at 2 o'clock in the morning, no matter what that emergency is, whether it's a parent that fell down a steps, if it's their spouse that's having a heart attack, if it's their son or daughter that has been involved in an accident, they don't care what we're paying to have someone come at a quick and um, responsible purpose to rescue to tend to that individual. That's what, the, that's what we ask these folks to do. And yes, they don't do it every single minute of every single shift, but they're there and they don't ask what we're coming or we're, what we're being called to do. They just show up and they do what's necessary. So um, from my perspective, I, I respect and understand the comments uh, by Commissioner Tobiah, uh, but I have a different perspective. For me, these folks that represent us in fire rescue, they've, they've chosen to forego um, making more money elsewhere. They've had the opportunity. They know that we haven't been competitive for a long time. They've heard promises from us for eight or 10 years, predecessors to us. Um, they risk their lives and disrupt their family lives uh, in the course of their employment in order to keep us and our community safe. We owe these folks our thanks and our respect, and I think these, uh, these negotiations, they've been long and tedious, and I think we've gotten in a good place for both the county and for them. And so for that perspective, I will support this gladly. I have a motion and a second, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Yeah. Passes 4-1. All right. We're, I have no more um, cards to uh, go through, so we're going to move into board reports. County manager. I have no report. Okay. County attorney. I'd just like to... Uh, introduce two members of my staff, um, Shannon Wilson and Melissa Powers. 
Um, Shannon, you probably know from the CARES items and yes. ARPA and before she retired. Oh, there you are. I'm looking all over. <laughs> Me too. Brown. And um, Melissa Powers is in black, and she worked on the union negotiations, as did Shannon. She also does risk, HR, FEMA, emergency management. She does um, PI litigation coordination. She does ethics issues, bankruptcy, garnishments, foreclosures, and a host of litigation questions. Um, she's a very heavy hitter in our office. Um, and I think you noticed that Abby is here in attendance. Yeah. So thank you very much for allowing me the time to introduce them. Thank you. Great legal staff. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Lover. I'm not going to twist anyone's arm, um, but I've, I've let the clerk's office know um, the memos that we get uh, or I should say the, the agenda item memorializations that we get in the mail for 53 cents on metered postage following the agenda items passing. I don't need to get hard copies. They can save the cost printing them. They can save the 53 cents of, of postage. I'm hopeful that if some it. or all of you are okay with them just sending you PDFs, we it. can save a couple hundred bucks yeah. a year just by letting them know. Uh, I'm not gonna make a motion, but if that's okay with you, at some point maybe just let them know so they can save a couple bucks. How yes, often sir. do you get them? I get them all the time. Huh. I don't know that I've ever I don't them. get them. They must like me. They must like you. Yeah. What's not to like, right? Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Tobias, sir. No report. Thank you for allowing me to uh, uh, participate via the telephone. Thank you, sir. We do miss you, though. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I would first like to um, wish Commissioner Tobias well and hope that he doesn't get COVID that this is an exercise in yes. futility, that would be good. Um, I wanted to mention an article in today's paper. I don't know how many people read it. It's regarding COVID, They're, they call them long haulers. If you haven't read it, I would suggest that you do. It is very eye-opening and scary. Um, so you need to read it because it, it may give you a different perspective on this disease. And um, lastly, I want to say it's an honor to be a part of this board. Yeah. I think that we collectively, uh, I think we bring uh, a talent and insight, intelligence and empathy when appropriate to our community and our constituents. And it is an honor to sit here and be with all of you. Yeah. I'm proud of us, too. Proud of you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Commissioner Zonka. How do I follow that? I know. Well, it's an honor to serve with you as well. It's, I'm going to hate to see you go when you do. Thank you. I honestly, I just, I'm, I'm grateful again to staff for getting that contract done and thankful to our uh, brave men and women who serve us on our fire department. But um, I just wanted to wish my daughter's 18. Oh. It's my last minor. You want to sing to her? Yeah, right. And <laughs> I birthday. wanted to wish her a happy birthday. Um, she's a pre-med student at UCF, and I'm so proud of her. And I also wanted to welcome my son home. He finally got granted his leave, so you may see him lurking around here in the next meeting or two. He's basically Logan's twin, so you can't miss him. So I just wanted to, I'm so grateful for my family, and I just want to wish everyone, you know, be safe out there. And I, I know most of you know that, but just, just be cautious. I, I just want to make a mention of the 9-11 ceremonies we had over the weekend, and I'm, I'm thankful you guys are here today. I got to attend a few, and it's very emotional to me. I remember all the things that we had to live through and, and how it really did unite us. And I, I just thought about this, and I thought it was a good thought, that the Constitution says all men are created equal. The Bible says that, but all men aren't equal. We have men that are heroes that run into fire, saving lives, and trying to rescue people that that have a hard time, and I appreciate it so much. And then there's evil people that, that do harm to other people, tear down and break down. And I'm so thankful that we have you guys. And, and today, especially since we just finished this contract, I just want to say how much I appreciate you. I know we all do up here. You've, you've heard it from us. But I appreciate so much the heroes that the Lord's given into our lives to, to help keep the community safe. And I, I appreciate you very much. So I just wanted to mention that. I did want to also mention, I'm, I'm just going to say it, I'm so proud of our governor in the way that he's standing these days. And we are all warriors of the Constitution of the United States of America, and we're going to continue that. And I'm, I'm thankful to his stand 
and I love the way that he's allowing people to make their own decisions and their own risk assessments. That's what America's made of, is people making their own personal decisions. There's things that we have to do as far as things that government should do as far as providing protection for people altogether. But I am extremely proud of our governor and the, the stand that he's making. And I continue to pray for our president to, to, make, to make good decisions. And I'm just going to end it there. God bless you guys. Have a great day. The meeting's adjourned. Amen. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.